NFTs. They're all over the news right now, but you don't have to be a famous artist or the founder of Twitter to get in on the action. Today I'm going to show you how to create and sell your first NFT. Before we get started, there's a little housekeeping I need to get out of the way. First and foremost, I am not a financial expert of any kind. I'm just learning about cryptocurrencies and NFTs myself, so I am not here to give you any financial advice. In fact, I would recommend you consult a financial advisor before making any investment. Second, I am not going to suggest you should or shouldn't buy any cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, nor am I endorsing any of the services I'm about to tell you about. Finally, trading cryptocurrencies carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Before deciding to trade cryptocurrency, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and tolerance for risk. The investment of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum and assets like NFTs can lead to loss of money over short or even long periods. Investors should expect prices to have large range fluctuations. The information published in this video cannot guarantee that investors will not lose money. And of course, this wouldn't be YouTube if I didn't ask you to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and sign up for notifications. Now that I've assured you I'm not an expert, let me steer you toward a couple people who know a lot more about this than I do. Daniel Van Boom from CNET has just put out a great video explaining what NFTs actually are. And in the CNET Now What video, Brian Cooley talks to Daniel and they do a great job demystifying the world of NFTs. The links to those videos are in the description, and I'm going to let them do the heavy lifting of explaining what an NFT is. For this discussion, I'm going to assume this is your first time dealing with NFTs, Ethereum, and maybe even cryptocurrencies of any kind. I'm learning as I go along, so let's assume you're just getting started like I am. Also, there are all different kinds of NFTs out there, including tweets, sports highlights, plots of land in video games. You get the idea. We're going to focus on digital art, since that's what seems to be grabbing the most headlines these days. Okay, is that enough preamble for you? Me too. Let's get started. Before you can make an NFT, you have to create a piece of art that you want to sell. And I use the term art here pretty loosely. There seems to be a major emphasis on digital art, either moving or static. And there are a ton of collections of things like old school crypto punks and the spin-offs like Lego punks and crypto corgis. I can't create digital art to save my life. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to take this slow-mo video I shot and turn it into an animated GIF. Is it art? That's for you to decide but it's hardly the worst thing I've seen for sale as an NFT. Now that the hard part's out of the way, let's start talking crypto. In order to conduct any transactions with Ethereum, you're going to need a wallet to hold your funds. The wallet can also help you connect to the NFT marketplaces and other decentralized apps, or dApps, that make use of the tokens. I chose Coinbase Wallet for a few reasons, including the fact that it lives on my phone instead of a computer, it uses biometric authentication, and it has a built-in browser for exploring various dApps. Coinbase Wallet is available for iOS and Android, so go to your app store and look for this one, the wallet. There's a separate Coinbase app for buying and selling crypto, but we'll get to that in a minute. Download Coinbase Wallet, and when it's installed, choose Create a New Wallet. Feel free to peruse the terms of service and the privacy policy like we always do whenever we sign up for a new app, and tap Accept. Now choose a username. This is your first chance to establish yourself in the crypto world, so pick a good one. Choose whether to make your name public or private. I'll choose private since I don't need any other people in my business. Now you can choose to protect your wallet on your phone with a PIN or in my case, Face ID. A fingerprint is also an option on some phones. Now's our chance to back up our wallet, and this is very important. Click the box that you understand that if you lose your recovery phrase, you won't be able to access your account, and tap Back Up Now. What you see here is the recovery phrase, also known as a seed that is unique to the wallet you just created. Do not lose this list of words. If you lose it, Coinbase won't be able to help you get it back. The company doesn't have access to that phrase. You can't just ask for a password reset. You can store an encrypted copy of your phrase in the cloud, either iCloud on iOS or Google Drive on Android, or back it up manually by writing it down on a piece of paper or copying the words to a password manager. So first I'll back it up to iCloud, create a password, no peeking, of course, nothing says you can't do both. Satisfy. Tap done. After that, my wallet's all set. No coins found. That's kind of sad. Let's fix that. It's time for me to buy some crypto, some ether to be exact. The terms ether and ethereum get used interchangeably, but that's not really accurate. I'll probably mess it up a few times in this video, but don't get mad. According to blockchaincouncil.org, 
Ethereum is a programmable blockchain-based software platform. Ether is the cryptocurrency asset that runs the Ethereum network. So we'll actually be trading in Ether, which has the symbol ETH. I should mention here that Ethereum isn't the only blockchain that allows you to trade NFTs. All of these blockchains have their own NFT marketplaces, token standards, and wallet services. Ethereum is the leader right now though, and that's what I'll be buying today. And you actually don't have to do it right now if you don't want to. I can upload my artwork without having any currency in my wallet. I just won't be able to do anything with my NFT, like sell it, without having some funds to pay the processing fees. If you want to just explore creating your first NFT, you can skip ahead to that part of the video. But like the old saying goes, you've got to spend crypto to make crypto, so I'm going to get some right now. Since we're just getting started and we don't have any Ether yet, we'll need to use cash to get some. Go to ethereum.org, click Get ETH, and search by country. The options available to you will vary based on where you live. Since I'm in the US, these are my options. I could choose any of these exchanges since I'm in California, but look at this one here. Coinbase. That sounds familiar. I'll choose Coinbase not only because it's integrated into the Coinbase wallet I'm using, but also because it's one of the few that lets you purchase crypto using a debit card, rather than a wire transfer. Using a debit card makes it easy, but the weekly limits are much smaller than the other methods. To get started, download the Coinbase app on your phone or sign up on their website. Enter your name, email address, and a secure password. Confirm your email address. And look! We can get $5 in free Bitcoin. More on that later. Now let's secure the account with two-step verification. Next you'll have to verify your identity. I know one of the main selling points around cryptocurrency is the anonymity it provides. But at this level, when dealing with your own debit card, I think it's worth proving who you really are. And don't bother copying any of this info, I made it all up for this video. And with that, we're in. I have a Coinbase account that will let me buy and sell, or send and receive, all types of cryptocurrency. But if I want to use my debit card, I have to verify a photo ID. To sweeten the pot a bit, Coinbase offers a bonus of $5 of Bitcoin if you verify your ID. You'll have to upload photos of the front and back of a driver's license or government ID card. I know this may sound a bit iffy, but again, I'm not saying you should do this, just explaining how you can do it. For demonstration purposes, this is a novelty ID card I bought back when I was 18 and only used for novelty purposes, I assure you. There are other methods you can use to fund your wallet. Coinbase uses a platform called Plaid to link directly to your bank account, which also allows higher daily limits. Or you can use a wire transfer, though those are typically reserved for large, single transfers and not incremental purchases. Whew. All right, now Coinbase has a copy of my driver's license. Next, I'll add a payment method. Since I'm only dealing with small amounts right now, I'll choose my debit card. Fill out the billing address and card info, Again, no point in copying this. Now you have to log into your bank's website and find the two small pending holds from Coinbase and enter the amounts here. Don't worry, there's no charge for these transactions and they'll go away in a few days. Let's go back home. I'll tap Get Started to make a purchase. If you wanted to buy Bitcoin, you can do that here, but we want Ethereum. So choose Ethereum from the long list of currencies. Next, choose your payment method that you set up before or one of the other options. Here you can see I have a $100 limit, but that doesn't mean I can buy $100 worth of Ether. If I put in $100 and tap Preview Buy, Coinbase takes a fee of $3.84 for processing the transaction, leaving me with $96.16. I understand the fees on Coinbase can be higher than some other exchanges, but for me it made sense to get started here. So I'll accept that fee and that price and hit Buy Now. Congratulations, we've entered the magical world of cryptocurrencies. I have successfully purchased almost 5% of one Ether coin. But if I look at my wallet, it's still empty. I have to transfer the funds from my Coinbase portfolio into my Coinbase wallet before I can spend them. To do that, tap this button with the two arrows and select Send. You need to have the address of your wallet where you want to store the Ether. So open the wallet app, tap Receive, choose Ethereum, and tap share address, copy it, then switch back to the Coinbase app. I know this is complicated. On the send page, enter the amount you want to transfer. I'll pick max to send it all. And then paste the address that I copied from the wallet. 
tap preview send. And now you'll see that the original amount has actually gone down a little bit to 95.33, but that I'm only sending 87.76. Coinbase doesn't take a fee at this point, but there is a network fee since the funds are being exchanged on the blockchain. So I guess I'm okay with that, so I'll hit send now. You'll get a text with a verification code, so enter that here. And if everything works, you'll get a confirmation message like this. The transaction isn't immediate, so it may be pending for a little while, but soon you'll see the balance in your wallet. Okay, I've got some art, I've got some Ethereum, and I've got a wallet to keep it all in. It's time to share my work with the world. I mentioned decentralized apps, or dApps, earlier. According to ethereum.org, dApps are a growing movement of applications that use Ethereum to disrupt business models or invent new ones. This includes apps focused on finance, gaming, technology, and the one we're interested in today, arts and collectibles. These are just a few of the platforms people are using to invest in and trade works of art, music, and limited edition collectibles, and to support the artists who create them. OpenSea seems to be more accessible to people getting started, so we're going to start there. You can get to OpenSea from the Coinbase wallet by opening the DAP browser and finding OpenSea, or by going to OpenSea.io in a browser. I encourage you to poke around a bit on the site to get an idea what kind of NFTs are available for sale or on auction. You might be surprised what kind of things you can find here. But we didn't come here to shop. I've got art to sell, so I'm going to click the Create button. The first thing you'll need to do is sign in using your wallet. MetaMask is the default on OpenSea, but there are a number of them you can use. Wallet link pairs with my Coinbase wallet, so I'll choose that. I'll scan the QR code with my wallet app. And here's my collections page. It's empty for right now, but not for long. Click here to create a new collection. Upload a logo and give your collection a name. You can change these later, as well as come back to add a description. Click create and success. My collection's been created. It's time to upload the GIF. We'll click add items and then add new item. You should get a prompt to sign for this action in your wallet, like I got here on my phone. Now I'll upload my amazing creation, give it a name. You can add a link to an external page if you want to promote your NFT elsewhere. And here you can enter a description of the piece. I'm not going to worry about these fields for now. And click create. And there it is. I've got a brand new NFT. Click visit and here's how the world will see your NFT as it exists on OpenSea. If this is as far as you want to go, great. You have an NFT that lives on the OpenSea Marketplace, giving you proof that the NFT belongs to you. You can click here to get a link and let anyone you want see what you've made. But this copy, the original, is all yours. I can also go back to my Coinbase wallet and see all the collectibles I currently own, which right now is just one. But if you want to see if anyone will buy your newly minted masterpiece, let's press on and press the sell button right here. Now you have a choice whether to offer your NFT for a set price or to put it up for auction to the highest bidder. I don't think there's going to be enough interest in my gift to start a bidding war, so I'm going to go with a set price. I'm going to set the price at 0.08 ETH. So how much is that? At this very moment when I'm recording this video, Ethereum is trading at over $2,000. In fact, just a few minutes ago, it crept over $2,100 for the first time ever. Like I said before, I am not an expert. I'm sure this is a great time to be getting started. So right now, my price of 0 0.08 is about $167, give or take. Does that sound high to you for this piece of art? It really is, but there's a reason why I'm setting that price. Fees. First of all, while OpenSea doesn't take a fee to list or buy items, the platform does take a fee of 2.5% from the price of a successful sale. I guess they have to keep the lights on somehow, but it's not just that. I'll hit the Post Your Listing button, and OpenSea will tell me that I need to initialize my account first by completing a free transaction. Except it's not really free, because there's something called a gas fee, which is the second reason why I set my price so high. But what's a gas fee? Ethereumprice.org explains that gas is used to pay for transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. They also have a handy chart showing trends in gas prices. We could spend all day talking about gas prices and how they're computed, and maybe someday we will, but for now what we need to know is that gas prices are dynamic and fluctuate wildly depending on the complexity of the transaction and how busy the network is. And the network is super busy these days because everyone wants to get it on Ethereum and NFTs. 
That means gas fees right now are as high as they've ever been, which has been a barrier to entry to the world of NFTs for some. So I want to price my NFT at least as high as my gas fees to try and recoup that cost if and when someone buys it. I'm sure someone out there has a great system for setting the price of NFTs, but I haven't found it yet. Let me know if you come across one. So let's see what the damage is going to be for this transaction. OpenSea has pushed a request to my wallet to sign for the transaction, and here's a warning that miner fees or gas fees are high right now. Tap OK, and there it is, the mining fee. At this moment in time, the mining fee or gas fee is $120.02. That's pretty wild, just to post a picture of a campfire that I'm pretty sure no one's going to want to buy. But we've come this far, so I'll suck it up and hit confirm. It could take a little while for this to go through. And that dollar value will keep fluctuating. I got another signature request. I'll hit sign. And there it is. My NFT is up for sale. You can see the current price is 0 0.08 Ether which right now is $164.26. Way too much money if you ask me. But again, my gas price ended up being a little less than $120. That's it, we're done. My first real NFT is on the market, waiting for someone to come along and snap it up. I don't think anyone's gonna be buying it anytime soon, but stranger things have happened. And on the off chance someone does buy it, and I'm not saying anyone should, but if someone does, I will donate any profits from the sale, minus the fees incurred during the process, to the SF Marin Food Bank in San Francisco. Again, I am not asking anyone or suggesting that anyone should spend their money on this NFT, especially since the gas fees are so high right now, it's really not worth it. If you want to support the food bank, I'll put a link in the description so you can donate to them directly, instead of risking your ether on an NFT like this. But if you really want to add this piece to your collection, I'm not going to stop you. It's your money. Thanks for watching all the way through this. I hope you learned something about minting NFTs, if that's something you really want to do. Personally, I feel like the NFT craze is doing a good job of bringing attention to the Ethereum blockchain, but it's just one example of how the platform can be used. I am interested in learning more about the different dApps and the whole DeFi world in general, but those are topics for another day. What do you think? Are NFTs just a fad, or could they be a worthwhile investment down the road? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more advice on how to do it all.